Today your first time here, or maybe your first time in a while. If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God, and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate, and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church.
Good evening, everybody. We are grateful to be here again. Today is Tuesday, our Bible study time. Our topic for today is the tripod of the kingdom. Before we go ahead, Pastor Frank will pray for us. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to sit under your feet, sit under your word. Lord, we ask that the entrance of your word bring light, bring illumination to our path, bring understanding to us. Lord, open our eyes to behold wondrous truth from your word this evening. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Tripod, the tripod of the kingdom. Introduction. Values are principles or standards of behavior. They are one's judgment of what is important in life. However, the values of the kingdom of God are not one's judgment of what is important in life, but God's standard of behavior for all of us that are members of his kingdom. These standards are to guide us to live lives that will honor God and make us channels of God's blessing to others. The kingdom of heaven is an existent reality. Jesus is the king and, it's, and his believers are members of this actual kingdom. But things on this earth do not completely reflect these realities, but they will, but they will one day. Whether you are the best or the worst, sorry, whether you have the best or the worst of this life, neither can compare to the supreme eternal value of the kingdom of heaven. Apostle Paul says they are they they are not eating and drinking but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, the tripod of the kingdom. Mm. Maybe we'll have the text. Okay. Our text is taken from Romans chapter 14, verse 15 to 17. It says, Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good, good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. Mm. The kingdom of heaven is not eating and drinking, mm. but joy, but righteousness, peace, peace and joy, joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, but if we take that our test, um, or this last verse 17, out of context, we may not be able to appreciate our study. Yeah. So we will not just have to go and do a little uh, 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 explanation on the background of our text, yeah. which is very important. Now, here is Apostle Paul talking to the church in Romans. You know, uh, he to the Jews were restricted from eating certain kind of food. We all of us know from the law of Moses. There are certain kind of food they are not supposed to eat. Even when they are going to eat, there are some ceremonies they need to perform to eat some of those food, like the abolition, the washing of hands and things like that. Now, when Christ came, when Jesus came and died, and according to what we know of the New Testament, he brought the, the law, he became the fulfillment of the law, so that as many as received Jesus, we ha have received the fulfillment of the law. And that was what Pastor Paul was busy explaining to them, mm -hmm. that now, People can no longer can are free. You are free to live your life. You can eat what you know that will nourish your body. Yeah. You can eat what you know that, that is not harmful to your body. Mm -hmm. It's no longer an issue of ceremony or ritual. Yeah. You can go ahead and do that as long as they had they are sanctified by the prayer and the word of God. Yeah. But so many other people who also got born again do not believe that. Yeah. They still believe. In as much as you are born again, you must still keep the law. Yeah. And the law of food was very important to them. Mm. So Paul was telling them if you are in the midst of such people, please help them. Mm. Not because of you but for their own fate. Yeah. So that when they see you eating, they won't go behind you and be saying that uh, Brother Frank, 
is doing what is wrong. Mm. Uh, but the is doing what is wrong mm. behind you. Yeah. So to help their faith, Paul says, just comply mm. with them at that time. Yeah. Because don't give them room to speak evil of what you yourself have thanked God for. Mm. Before you take your food to eat, you have said, God bless this food for me. I thank you for providing it for me. And somebody is there saying, what you are doing yeah. is not right. Yeah. So Paul was now saying, don't give them that opportunity to speak evil for what you give thanks for. Yeah. Because the kingdom of God does not consist on the food you eat or the drink that you have taken. Yeah. And I put them clear that this is what the kingdom of God consists of. Mm. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that is what we want to consider today. Yeah. And we call them the tripod of the kingdom. Wow. Thank you very in much. In other words, we shouldn't measure in frivolities, measuring in things that do not matter. Exactly. Today. Exactly. Okay. So there are several things today that can be categorized yeah. under that eating and drinking. Yes. There are several things. We may not want to go into those those things right here because some of them may be a little bit controversial <laughs> and will raise questions yeah. we are not likely going to see to answer. But what we are trying to make us understand clearly is that those things are not the foundation. They are not the basis. They are not the pillars where the kingdom of God is standing. Yeah. So what Apostle Paul said in the Bible and what we have already read out to ourselves today is the basic things that the Bible tells us that this is the key. Yeah. If you go and eat and drink and don't have these things, you can't belong to the kingdom. Yeah. But even if you don't eat and drink, but you have these things, mm. you have belong to the kingdom. Yeah. So they are the major issue that the kingdom of God is standing on. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we go straight to them. And we call it number two in our, in our study outline. Now, uh, the tripod of the kingdom. Apostle Paul noted unequivocally that dietary laws are trivial in the issues of the kingdom of God. I was talking about dietary laws. You know, maybe you don't eat snail in your own village. Yeah. You know, and we eat it in my own village. Mm. Or maybe you people don't eat snake mm. in some areas. Mm. Some other people eat snake mm. in my village. They don't eat snake, but some people eat it. Mm. So some even worship it mm. in some places. Now those things doesn't have anything to contribute mm. to the kingdom of mm. God. Mm. It doesn't. Yeah. These are laws that are either cultural or made by one person or mm. the other yeah. for reasons known to him, mm. not given by God, mm. not provided in the scriptures. Yeah. So, let, let me even make it more, uh, you, you, you mentioned that we shouldn't go to a spill to the area that will make it controversial, <laughs> but we just can't avoid it. Yeah. You know, there are, you hear people, they tell you, okay, if you don't wear earring, or if you are wearing earring, yeah. that, that, that you are no longer a Christian yes. or something okay, like that. Okay. You know, so somebody will want to rub it in on others because he can wear, he wants to exercise that liberty and wants to rub it in. You have people who tells you even to pray. You see somebody telling you, ah, must you kneel down to pray? God is your father. You know, you should just sit down, relax, and just <laughs> just with yeah, God. Yeah. You know, that the other Christian wants to shout, wants to express himself while praying. Well, you know, roll on the floor. Yeah, some people even roll on the floor. Yeah. You know, and somebody, maybe because of the level of faith and all that, feels, ah, should just sit down and just just with God. You know, so these these issues are, are there. For so us. so these are the these are the issues, yeah. and they will need to take care of mm. what actually is more important yeah. from the scriptures. Mm. So that's what some Apostle Paul says that the issue the the dietary laws are trivial mm. in the issues of the kingdom of God, and that their fulfillment are not essential in the kingdom of God matters. Yeah. They're not essential. So that, like he said, now that like you wear earring mm. and you don't wear earring, mm. they're not essential yeah. in your in your relationship with God. Yeah. They can't just be essential. Mm. Now, what are important? He said, however, he stated that the kingdom is standing on a tripod right of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Mm. The kingdom of God is standing on that. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Mm. As we read it in the Bible there, it says, for the kingdom of God, for righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, that is the kingdom mm. of God. Yeah. Consist of this. Mm. So if you don't have any of this, mm. or all of this, 
you are you are likely not sure. Yeah. So uh, can a tripod actually, if you remove one leg, can he really stand? He can stand. He can stand. A, a tripod requires the three legs so, to be able now, to stand. Yeah. So at each point in time, all the three must be there. Yes. That is essential. That's the basic. So that's why it's important we follow this study today to know whether you really, really have the three legs yeah. standing. Thank mm. you. Yeah. Now, the first one is righteousness. Mm. If we go through our study, we say it is basically the quality of being right. Mm. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor uh, Frank, what, 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 what can you say about that quality yeah. of being right? Yeah, it's, it's the quality of being in a position, you know, whereby you, you know that I, I am not hurting the person I'm in a relationship with. Yeah. So I am in a good relationship, you know, with God. When you are in that position, when you are in a good relationship with God, you can say I'm in right standing, you know, with God. Okay, let's continue. He it. said it is both judicial and gracious. Yeah. God declares the believer righteous mm. in the sense of acquitting him mm. and impact and imparts righteousness on him. Mm. We are going to read the scripture and that's mm. chapter chapter five, verse twenty-one. Mm. I think it will help us to quickly uh, understand okay. this definition we, are, we, are, we have here. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter Second 5. Corinthians chapter 5. Verse, verse, verse 21. Verse 21. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. It says, For he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Might become the righteousness of God mm. in him. Let's, let's just take a little time to explain we we mentioned two issues here we say that this uh, uh, righteousness is both judicial and gracious mm. now judicial in the sense that you 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 have been brought before the court mm. and then you have been uh, discharged and acquitted they says you are not guilty mm. the court has sat looked at the accusations against you yeah. and looked at the, the merits of it and mm. said sorry this man cannot be found guilty. Mm. Now, why is it so? Not because of uh, what you have personally done. The Bible says that God made Jesus to be seen for you. Mm. That, that punishment that you are supposed to, to, uh, to take for sin, mm. Jesus has taken it for you. It. So you have now been discharged. Yes. So you don't have anything again to suffer for yeah. because Jesus has suffered yeah. for you. That is why you are not guilty. Yeah. Now, gracious in the sense that these things are, are imputed unto you because of grace, mm. because of what Jesus did. Yeah. Now God gave it to you. You now giving you the ability to now be able to live for him. Mm. That's the grace part of that. Yeah. Now, let's, let's, let's get... I wanted to read that scripture from another translation. And let me do Say, so for God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us, so that we who did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with Him. Mm. Now, the only one who did not know sin, mm. He became sin for you. Yeah. So, what happened in this change? You that didn't know righteousness yeah. became the righteousness yeah. because you are united with God. Yes. Can you see that? That's such a wonderful thing we do. Mm. God did there. So the act of God in declaring one righteous covers the two conditions of judicial and gracious. Mm. Now, Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus fulfilled the law and therefore all the requirements of the law were met. Mm. All the requirements of the law mm. were met. Mm. That was why St. Paul says the kingdom of God does not consist in food and eating. Because those are part of the law of Moses. Yeah. And Jesus has fulfilled it. Yeah. So every single thing that that law provided or spoke against or spoke for mm. in terms of food and, and, and drinks has already been completed. Mm. You cannot be held guilty or charged for it. Mm. Jesus has already fulfilled it for you. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, I continue again. He said, Jesus has fulfilled the law you know, sorry. So Jesus fulfilled the law, and therefore all the requirements of the law were met. This he did for all humans. Mm. He didn't do it for a select few. Mm. So every person born today on earth, mm. Jesus has done it for him. Yeah. It's not for a select few, for every human. Mm. Now, but the question is, 
is everybody and everybody acknowledge and receive this? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. So it can be effective in the in anybody who hasn't acknowledged. Yeah. Frank, you are a, a computer person. Mm -hmm. How how can you can you help me understand the word activate when it comes to programs in the computer? Okay, there are certain programs that come to you. Okay, yes. there are softwares you you get them, you buy them, you have the right to install them into your system. Okay, okay, but until you activate such programs, you, you cannot use those programs. You cannot get the benefits of those programs, even though it's there. It's there in your system. You can open and say, okay, I have Microsoft Office. I have this. But you cannot use it effectively and get the benefits of that program until you activate, activate it. And yes. there are certain things that will help to activate it. Yes. Now, this is exactly what yeah. Jesus did. Yeah. He did it for all humans. Yeah. Now, not every human has downloaded that benefit mm. to him. How do you download it? Mm. By making Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Believe you it. need to. And when you receive Jesus as mm. your personal Lord and Savior, mm. you have downloaded that mm. benefit. And activated, and activated it. it. Yes. So you can now see that righteousness will mm. run like mm. a program in yeah. your life. Exactly. And that's what he's exactly. talking about. Exactly. It runs like a program exactly. in your life. Exactly. Now, Okay, mm. I, I, I have an a, a, a antivirus installed in my, my, in my system. Mm. And you know when I open my system, the automatically it checks things in. If I plug in a flash into my system, mm. automatically it tells me that this exactly. thing has uh, detected uh, something. Yeah. I didn't ask him to do it, but because that program, it had been programmed, yes. it does it. Exactly. So when you give your life to Jesus mm. and you become in union with Jesus, mm. that life of Christ is it's downloaded into, it's activated. Mm. Mm. No, it's activated. Yeah. So that is why the Bible says that you is the quality of being right. Yeah. That is what I'm talking about. Yeah. The quality of mm. being right. Yeah. It's not that you you worked hard mm. and then you pass all your questions, they got you, you got mm. 100 percent That's no. not what I'm talking about here. Yeah. The question about that there's a program mm. running inside of you that has already been activated. Exactly. If there's error, it corrects it. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, he said, by grace, we benefit from what Jesus did. Mm. God, God, based on this, declare, on, on, on this, de uh, uh, this. Judge, God, based on this, declared us righteous. So, every member of God's kingdom is, is righteous. righteous. That's, that's a triple. That's the mm. first triple. Mm. You just got to know it. Mm. You know, because of what Jesus has done, based on that benefit we have, mm. God says, Frank, mm. you're righteous. righteous. And do you mm. think that what God said can be contested? No. No way. <laughs> that cannot be, cannot be contested. No, no way. So, no way. Uh, child of God, have you seen the difference yeah. now? You know, we have a governor in Nemo State today, just because Supreme Court declared him governor. Mm. It, you know, it can't be contested. Those who even tried to then contest it yeah. came back and found out that it's not possible. Yeah. Why? Because the law, the highest law in the land has said so. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you the truth. Mm. God, there's no authority above God. Yeah. He has said that you are righteous. Yes. So, if anybody contested that with you, mm. let him go back to God and ask <laughs> Now, the second point here is peace. Mm. This is the state of rest, quietness and calmness, mm. absence of strife. Mm. It generally denotes a perfect well-being. Peace includes harmonious relationship between God and men, and men and men. Mm. Jesus, being the Prince of Peace, gives peace to those who call upon him for personal salvation. Mm. That's what Jesus does. Yeah. He gives peace to those who call upon him for personal salvation. The peace here is much more than the absence of war or conflict. Mm. It is wholeness, which includes health, safety, perfectness, fullness, prosperity, tranquility, and rest. Mm. It is it. The prophet Isaiah said, The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. Mm. That is what this man said, mm. Isaiah. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Mm. And by his stripes, we were yeah. healed. The angels at the birth of Jesus noted that he is the peace bringer. Mm. 
sorry, noted that he's, he is the peace bringer, as they said, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men, at the birth of Jesus. Uh. At the birth of Jesus, he hasn't lived a day uh. on this earth. They already said that because of that, mm. they say that peace is to, to the earth. Mm. Exactly. Is that, exactly. Is this it? Yes. The peace to the earth. Mm. And then goodwill towards men. We yeah. may discuss that mm. goodwill to men one day. Mm. Now, let's let's quickly look at some of the, the best way because I, I didn't notice I didn't note anything that that is more than exciting here than to know that the chastisement of our peace mm. was upon him. In other words, our peace is guaranteed in Christ. Once you are in Christ, uh, your peace is guaranteed in him. Regardless of what is happening around you, that peace, as a child of God, you always should feel that inner peace. Yes. You know, there was this, um, there was this artistic competition, and uh, artists were asked to just draw a picture that depicts peace. You know, and different people were drawing all kinds of stuff and all that. And then one of the artists went and drew a bed with a branch, you know, branching over an ocean, you know, and the ocean was raging and just the bed was just there on that branch, sleeping. You know, the branch over the, over this, over the river that was just boiling and, you know, and the bed is just there, sleeping. That's peace in the midst of crisis. You know, uh, Paul himself described, you know, he said, I, I've been beaten several times, I've been shipwrecked, and I've, you know, he went ahead to list different kinds of things, you know, that he have gone through, yet he, nobody, he said, he was the one writing this, this text that yeah. we are using today, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, so, in the midst of all challenges that we may face as Christians, one thing we should always look out for is that peace. Anytime you find peace, you know, that inner peace, you know, eluding you not there, that's the time to quickly rush back to God for a refill because it's very, very critical. Thank you, know, you very, very much. Very you know, you know, in the Hebrew, mm -hmm. that word, that word is shalom. Yeah. Shalom. Yeah. And it's it's all impressive. Yeah. We, we we try to bring them out here when we say that it is it it has to do with health, yeah. you know, with safety yeah. with with perfectness yeah. with fullness mm. prosperity tranquility and rest yeah. that's all that got to do with shalom yeah that's when they even even the jews that's what they tell you shalom mm. that is it's not just peace yeah. you know it is all impressing you yeah. have peace you have safety you have prosperity yeah. you have good health and everything yeah. that's what we're mm. talking about here now when the, the the bible the prophet Isaiah said the chastisement of his peace for our peace was on him. Mm -hmm. What did he mean? Mm -hmm. He said that everything that could cause us not to have peace mm -hmm. had been put on Christ. Uh -huh. Everything that yeah. has, that is that can generate conflict, can generate lack of peace in mm -hmm. our life, mm -hmm. had been put on Christ. Yeah. So there is no way we cannot have peace. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's not that you cannot quarrel with your neighbor mm -hmm. if you so choose. Mm -hmm. It's not that you cannot have difficulties or maybe be assaulted by a bus conductor mm. or maybe be abused by a customer mm. or maybe be, 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 be deny something by somebody or thereabout. Those things are bound to happen, but they are not the catalyst mm. to your peace otherwise. Mm. What is, is the presence mm. of the person that brings peace. Mm. That is what the, the, the angels we are celebrating yeah. because he is the peace bringer. Mm. He has come to the earth, say glory to God in the highest mm. and on earth, mm. peace mm. among men. Because the joy bringer has come. Has come. The peace bringer mm. has come. Has come. You know? yeah. So what, 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 what else can we say mm. than to say thank you, Father? Yeah. And that is the second tripod, the yeah. second leg yeah. of the tripod. So we now know that every child of God will definitely stand on righteousness and the peace, peace, peace that passes all understanding. understanding. The peace mm. of God that passes mm. all understanding. David, David said in Psalm, he said, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I know that you are with me. You know, that's, 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 that, that, that's the peace. That's the peace. Just gives you peace. Yeah. Now, let's, let's continue, sir. Mm. The next thing we have there 
is joy in the Holy Spirit. This is being glad, joyful, and rejoicing as a product of the Holy Spirit in you. Mm. So it's not because, you know, in those days, uh, they, they went this, I don't know who made this, this, this beer, they call harp for happiness, you know. So there will be show people who are dancing and rejoicing and drinking it as though that once you take a bottle, you will become happy. <laughs> it could be so, it could be possible, but that's not the joy we're talking about here. Yeah. We are talking of something much more than that. It's not also when you went to school and got excellent in your in your report sheet, maybe made a distinction, then you everybody celebrating you. Mm. That's not what I'm talking yeah. about. Here. It's not when you you win a lottery mm. and then maybe hit a good job. Mm. That's not what I'm talking about. Here. Yeah. We are saying that this is as a result a product mm. of the Holy Spirit inside of you, yeah. and it's very important for us to note that. Mm. Now it is not because of the circumstances around you. What we are just saying around you due to success prosperity or victories joy in the holy spirit is best explained by the words of habakkuk and what did habakkuk say you know in chapter three uh, chapter three of habakkuk verse 17 and 18 it said though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruits be on the vines though the labor of the of the olive may fail and the fields yield no fruit. Mm. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no head, no head in the stalls, mm. yet I will rejoice mm. in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my, my salvation. salvation. Brother, is this mm. a possibility that somebody can face <laughs> this thing like this? How all this the countries and he says he's dancing and rejoicing. Mm. That's why it's called joy in the Holy Spirit. Not just joy anywhere. Joy in the Holy Spirit is being fueled by the Holy Spirit. Exactly. It's, it's not. It's exactly. not human made. It's yeah, not no. man made. No. You know, it, circumstances. It's, 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 it's not second. Not there's no external thing that can influence it. It's the Holy Spirit that is that is bubbling it out from your system. You know that even the devil himself is confused. You know when he sees you bubbling in that kind of because joy, because he has set up everything, <laughs> everything to, to frustrate you. And yes, yet you and yet you are happy. Wow. And yet you are happy. You know, so we should get to this point. In fact, nothing scares me when I I, I hear a Christian tell me that I, I, I'm, I'm contemplating suicide. Wow. Because this this is a point. It just tells you that this is not there. Yeah. The meat of the matter is not there. That peace, that joy is not there. I am not scared when I when a Christian tells me, ah, somebody is hospitalized. You know, there is this issue. Yeah, my, I don't have money. Uh, yeah. th those kind of stuff. You know, no matter what the devil throws, those are external issues. I am not scared by them because those can change in a bit. But this one, this one, whenever a Christian gets so, the devil pushes you to the world so much that you lose focus of God, you, you, you lose your peace, and you get to the point where you are now contemplating suicide. No, no, no. That's a point that we need to, you need to seek help. You need to, at that point in time, you need to seek help because it, you, you are about crossing the line. You know, or you've even crossed already. You know, so that point, it's very, very critical for you to begin to seek help. And if you are here, you're watching right now, and you have gotten to that point in your life, I want to tell you that there is a word of God for you. God is available to lift you out of that pain. God has paid the price. He has sent his only son to pay the price for your peace, the price for your joy. And the devil has no right to steal it. If you can only hang on in faith, child of God, you will be delivered from whatever situation it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. So we said here, the only reason to still be joyful when all the indices for joy are negative is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And this is the testimony of the kingdom of God. The only reason. When the, the, the business is crumbling, when Things are bad. Yeah. We, we don't have reason in Nigeria as at now to really celebrate. Yeah. I have lived in this country for mm. close to 60 years. Yeah. I haven't seen it like this mm. before. Mm. You know. But yet, 
we are, we are happy. <laughs> Not because of the situations in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but because of the grace of God mm -hmm. that is sustaining us. Yeah. And I was saying that if we, all of us live in Nigeria and the whole system it doesn't make anybody to uh, feel comfortable, uh, yeah. you know, but see us now, we are still doing Bible study, we are happy. Mm -hmm. What's the reason? Because there is something in us mm -hmm. that grace deposited. And that is why we are happy. Mm. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's not because we are not passing the same road people are passing. Yeah. It's not because we are not going to the same market people are going yeah. to. But the Holy Spirit, who is in us, mm. is bringing the joy yeah. that people see in our faces. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I want to really say that these three things we have atomized and called the tripod of the kingdom mm. are not only necessary, they are essential. Mm. They are very important mm. because not one can stay on itself mm. that's why it is dangerous mm. maybe you think you have the peace of the holy spirit mm. you can't get it until you have you, you i mean you can't you can't get peace until you have righteousness mm. until you are declared righteous and then you can't have joy until you have peace mm. and these are the very important things mm. you can't have joy in the holy spirit mm. until there is peace yeah. your house is at, 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 at peace yeah. you can't have joy so these are the things why we need to be sure that uh, their three legs are standing perfectly. Maybe our reflection, we, we said something here in our outline that the tripod of righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit can be explained to us, or is explained to us. By righteousness, God declares us acquitted and in right standing with him. And that's very important. God declares us acquitted from whatever accusation the devil had levied against us. Yeah. The devil can tell, tell, can accuse you of anything, of anything yeah. whatsoever. In fact, you know sometimes EFCC will take somebody to court and they will have up to one, 100 <laughs> accusations. 100, you know, and they will list it one by one, what they are bringing to court to, to convict you of, yeah. you know. So the devil can even have Several of that, mm. you know, several of that, you know, and uh, and but it doesn't matter mm. the number. What we are talking about, that you have been declared not guilty, yeah. you have been acquitted. Now, number two, you say peace. By peace, we feel the completeness that we lost, the completeness that mm. we lost. Mm. When you are not saved, mm. you will see that it's like you are you are not full, you are not complete, mm. you are something is missing somewhere. Yeah. Everybody have that, that mm. kind of vacuum and that kind of emptiness inside of him. Mm. By peace of God, that, that feeling is, is not there. Mm. Yeah, we complete mm. and you, that we have lost and then the rest we are seeking for. Mm. Because everybody is looking forward to enter into the rest mm. of God. Mm. The peace of God fulfills that. Yeah, peace. you're already in rest. <laughs> so, by joy in the Holy Ghost, we express our new relationship with God to others and show our appreciation to God for what He has done mm. for us. Mm. See the see the two front mm. of, of, of the joy. Mm. The joy with joy, people know that something yeah. has happened to Frank, yeah. something happened to Julius. You yeah. know, people know. Hey, yeah. what's happening? It ideas I, what I, I can remember the day I gave my life to Christ. Mm. In less than in less than twenty-four hours, mm. a friend very close. Ah, Julius would have entered you. Yeah. The joy was just there. Yeah. Everything was just there. You could mm. see it. You could, you could feel it. You could yeah. see it. And you no, know, this yeah. person is not the same again. Yeah. That is how joy in the Holy Ghost helps you mm. to, to testify, to express to others, mm. you know, that something is happening inside yeah. of you. And by it also, you show appreciation to yeah. God. That this is what God has done for me. Yeah. You show appreciation to God. Mm. You know. My conclusion. Can we look at our conclusion again? In conclusion, may Pastor Frank will read those things for okay. us out. In conclusion, we should note the following. God's kingdom is of inestimable value because it costs the Son of God his very life. Again, God's kingdom is a treasure because it represents the state of salvation. God's kingdom is a treasure because it represents a state of salvation. And then thirdly, it says, God's kingdom is a treasure because it affords an environment where, wherein one may find peace 
with God and with himself. With God and with himself. And then finally, God's, the kingdom of God is worthy of our sacrifices. The kingdom of God is worthy of of our sacrifices. So anything you give up to get the kingdom of God mm. is worth it. Yeah. Anything you give up, mm. anything you give up mm. to ensure, to be, to confirm to yourself mm. that you've gotten the kingdom of God. Yeah. You know, the, Jesus gave a lot of parables that had to deal with this. Mm. Sometimes somebody saw a peril, you know, and then he went and sold everything he had yeah. to go and purchase it. Mm. You know, and he gave quite a lot of uh, uh, analogies to depict the importance mm. of the kingdom of God. Mm. Child of God, you are listening to us, you are past, you, 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 you've been with us this brief moment of this Bible study. I'm sure you know that whatever sacrifice you make to confirm to yourself that you have the kingdom of God is worth it. It can never be in vain. And I congratulate you if you have done that already. Thank you very much and God will bless you and, 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 and bless you really good. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I will pray together before we say bye, mm. Pastor Frank. Yeah, praise God. Maybe before we just pray, let me just say, in our own case, the sacrifice have really been paid for. Jesus have paid the price. Okay, and all you need is to accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior right now, and your journey for righteousness, peace, and joy begins immediately. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity we've had to look into your word this evening. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for those who uh, today, they want to commit their life to Jesus. They want to begin this journey. Father, I pray, I join my faith with theirs as they call upon you. Your word says that as many that call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved as they call upon your name in faith. Father, I ask that you accept them into your kingdom. Wash away their sins and Lord, put them in right standing with you. Thank you for everyone who is watching. Thank you for uh, everyone who have participated. Lord, I ask that your grace, your grace, your peace, your love, Lord, we are bound in their lives and let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Just one.